Okay, we're live. Okay, just not playing the music. Okay. Oh. Well, good evening and welcome to Chasing Prophecy on FM 107, New Orleans, where we discuss anything and everything beyond the scope of normal. Uh. Remember to like us on YouTube and follow us on Instagram. I'm Jenny Nicasio, along with Sean Kelly and Jason I and Petro. Happy Thursday, everyone. Hey, happy Thursday. Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Good. And we have uh, Russ, uh, Russell, and we did have our guests and he disappeared, but that's okay. So I'm just going to, yeah. these days are really getting messed up lately, guys. But bear with us. Yeah, We're sorry so about that. But we have a special yeah. guest tonight. I hope he comes back. Um, Brett Mahana. I can't, might be pronouncing his name. Monahan, author of The Bell Mon Witch. Is he there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. There he is. <laughs> I don't want to mess up your name. I didn't have a time to talk to you. But um, we're going to talk to him about the bl bl bell. I keep calling it the Blair. The yeah. Bell Witch, bell. Tennessee. And it's an American haunting. And they also made a movie out of it. And I did watch it twice. I watched it years ago. And I watched it again this weekend. Um, it's a uh, a movie with Sissy Spacek and Donald Sutherland. And it's called American Haunting. Um, throughout Tennessee... Okay, I'll make sure I get this right, guys. Throughout Tennessee, um, it's known as Old Kate. Um, the Bell Witch took up resident with John Bell's family in 1818. It was a cruel and noisy spirit, giving to rapping on the walls and groaning sounds before it's found its voices. Well, wow. it kind of was very scary, the movie. So I'm not sure I'm going to ask, but can't wait to ask our guests if it's, this, you know, true or not to the story well um, but anyways we have he's a very well-known author he's he's done a lot of work so he'll be able to teach us so welcome to the show um so happy to have you here brent i want you to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us how you got started with all this bell witch and you you know talk about your books a little bit before we get deep dive deep into the story of the bell witch well thank you jen can you hear me yes absolutely wonderful and um um I'm very gotcha. happy to be on your show. Great. Um, let, me, let me begin by saying that um, I had written horror stories before. Uh, the way that this came to be was that Michael Schnessel, who is a very good friend of mine and the head writer for One Life to Live, really had a mania for supernatural things. He had a huge book collection, which he bequeathed to me, unfortunately, he died 29 years ago. But um, one of the books that he bequeathed to me was on poltergeists. And I began reading about this American haunting, the only one that supposedly has uh, resulted in the death of uh, somebody, a member of the family. So it got uh, relatively, relatively infamous. Um, as soon as I read about that, I realized that there were some things that were really e explicable in 20th century and 21st century terms um, that these people would have missed. And what I began to do is uh, um, research Tennesseeana bookstores and other places uh, so that I could get some background on this. When I mm -hmm. wrote the book, I did the same thing as Robert Waller did in Bridges of Madison County. I lied. Of course, all fiction writers are liars, right? They're professional liars. Of course. So, uh, I, said, I said that this manuscript had been passed on to me and that I edited it. Uh, not so. Uh, there are no uh, covered bridges in Madison County if you research it. And the man was never a, um, a National Geographic photographer. But you know, it helps people to, to suspend their disbelief and especially uh, the inclination to do that with uh, supernatural things. Uh, poltergeists, you probably discussed on your show before, are, are rife all over the place. Uh, often they are associated with um, girls changing into women and throwing off so-called psych psychic energy Polter means noisy, geist means ghost in German. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, dishes would rattle and noises would be made through the house and doors would slam and so forth. In this particular story, the more I researched it, the more I realized that 
this was like a um, a mystery uh, story. Mm-hmm. Bet- Betsy Bell was the girl who was, quote, haunted, unquote. And um, this haunting began not too long after her sister, her older sister, moved out of the Bell House. We're talking about a house that was the first thing there in uh, Middle Tennessee, a uh, very rural community. Um, and then when she disappeared, these sounds began and, and um, uh, her, Betsy was staying in her room all by herself. When she showed that she was, quote, possessed, it was always about the same time, always toward midnight. Um, and uh, she would pantomime, or it seemed like something was holding her down to the ground. She would flail against it. Um, I'm going to spoil spoil things, but many people say the movie, because Donald Sutherland insisted on softening it up. The movie is confusing. He didn't want to be a, you know, he wanted to be in the movie, but he didn't want to be a bad guy. And that's a little hard to do when you're the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the explanation as far as I am concerned on this is that there was some deep psychological things going on that Betsy may not have been aware of. But the father, this was an incestuous relationship, oh. uh, not of her wanting. The sister moved out, left her alone upstairs in the bedroom. Uh, the mother was a, very, a heavy sleeper. Uh, the father was getting on in years. He was quite old. And uh, he was trying to relive his youth because Betsy looked very much like the mother did mm. when he married her. So what she was doing is, I'm sure, just like many uh, predator fathers and abusers of children do, they say, you know, uh, if you tell, this will ruin the family, we'll be thrown out, I'll be put in jail. And uh, so she ended up, her psyche, uh, uh, creating this bell witch phenomenon to try to pantomime and tell people what was going on in her life. And that's a pretty scary thing. Mm-hmm. But not to, not to say that there isn't poltergeist energy. I don't think there are ghosts. I think it's emanations from me, from young men, young women, usually. Really? It's still pretty interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. I have a question real quick. Um, when I was watching the movie, um, there was a curse or from the that woman, the oh, witch, yes, or the she really was wasn't a witch, she was just a nasty woman. Yeah, she was nasty, and she, I think, uh, uh, Bats, uh, Mrs. Bats, um, was happy to be the eccentric in the community. Her husband, early on, um, got in the way of a, a tree he was chopping down, and it did what was called kicked back took out his knees and his legs and he was a cripple thereafter. So she lived next door to to the, um, to the family. We're talking about the bell family. Mm -hmm. And in order to stay alive, she let them harvest some of the forest there. And um, they never came to an agreement on how much forest and what it should be, how much it should cost. Uh, There was a, a, it wasn't a true lawsuit, but it was taken up before the church elders and so she did curse the family. And uh, inadvertently, I think she drew a lot of hatred upon herself because everybody said, well, this is the curse. Yes, old, it was. So they named this thing Old Kate, right? Old Kate. After Kate Batts. So um, there wasn't a witch. No, was she was an eccentric, loudmouth Is it woman. just her? She's, okay. Okay, it's confusing. What about the? Uh, it's a completely different story than I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're gonna have to tell your side of the story. <laughs> so I was wondering about the uh, when uh, one of the kids unearthed a uh, skull, which they think is from an Indian, from the Indian burial grounds around that area. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, there's speculation that the Bell Witch could actually be a multitude of angry Indian spirits. True. You know, you know like. Is there like disturbed spirits? Everybody had a theory. 
Um, let's not forget that these were primitive Americans, and it wasn't so long before that we were having the Salem witch trials. So, um, you know, Freud hadn't, it was going to be a long while before he was born, and psychology came really uh, into um, being a respectable science. So superstitions grew up, and uh, there was a, you know, whisper down the lane. Do you ever play that game where somebody says a sentence? Pass, whispers it to the next person, whispers oh, it. Oh, yeah. I miss but that. But when you get to the end, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's been embellished and changed. Everybody wanted to stick their two cents in and add a little bit here and there to make it more interesting. So you have to separate the wheat from the chaff in this thing. Is There's awful lot of excess stuff. Okay. Well, what story did you hear, Russell? Well, I heard it um, after... Bats got hurt, Mr. Bats. He needed money, and John Bell was buying up his property. Mm -hmm. And he bought it very cheap. And Kate was very upset about it. And then he went and purchased a slave girl. But he said, I'm going to leave her here with her mother because she's too young yet. And I'll come back and pick her up. And then when he went back to pick her up, Kate said, we want more money for her. And he goes, we already had a deal. And then the, she said, well, you're not going to get her. And that's when they took it to the church. And um, then Kate Batts placed a curse on him. And okay. they said well. she, would, she would go into church and she threw her dress over a, a guy that was kneeling on the floor praying and just started whipping him. But it had nothing to do with the bell, but they said she was very Eccentric. out of her mind. Yeah, out of her mind. <laughs> so it wasn't like in the movie that she was, they went to court and uh, they made, Bell made a deal that um, she he could use her, her, take her land in exchange for the slave at 20%. Was that right? Was that made up? It Brent? didn't say the numbers. It just said they argued over a slave girl. What about Brett? Was that the same? Yeah, uh, the slave girl stuff, I left that out. Um, and uh, as I read it from the uh, what the younger son Richard's account and the account of, uh, uh, um, at, what was it, M.V. Ingram, actually, you know, women would hide behind initials in those days. Mm -hmm. um, because they wouldn't be accepted, right? So... Uh, from those two accounts, he was renting the land. He didn't buy it, but he was denuding it of trees. Mm. So, oh, because I remember they said the, the timber. Okay, that yeah, she he was took the value of the, the of the timber way beyond what was supposed to be. And I, uh, I think the twenty percent a usury thing was just that was a us a, a figure that was not allowed twenty percent. Geez. They should have to deal with our credit card. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. The yeah. story, the story I like was when uh, Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, went to um, the Bell Witch. He heard about the Bell Witch and he wanted to see it. And he went to the land, and his wagon locked up. Oh, that was Jackson. Jackson. Hmm? Jackson. Yeah, Andrew Jackson. I'm sorry. And his wagon locked up. And then they find out a soldier the night before around the campfire said, I have silver bullets and I'm going to put one right through the witch's heart. And when the one, the one that gave me the most pause was the so-called ability of the um, creature to um, attend a Sunday sermon and come back and tell them, what was said at the sermon uh, before anybody returned home and could tell them about the sermon. And it was the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty wild. So yeah. But but Jackson, was, oh, Jackson oh, oh. called the soldier out and said, give me them bullets. And he kept them. And he told, he apologized to the, um, he, he apologized to the, to the witch. And he said, nobody's going to shoot you. And, Jackson's account was it moved his wagon moved right after that after he said that 
But they said they tried to drag that wagon and it, it just was locked up. I like that story. It, you know, that was from, you know, Andrew Jackson that had some credibility. This yeah. is a small book, if you see it physically. Uh, once I did my research, I was able to write it in six weeks. But as an author, and having written a number of novels before this, mm -hmm. you realize what the pace and the flow and the focus must be. And uh, just because you have some information like the Jackson story, which is kind of delicious, you decide now that's mm -hmm. taken us off of off the beaten path you know that's that's marginalia to the story so that's why you you wouldn't see it in uh an american haunting or the bell witch and by the way jen you said i want to say blair witch you know <laughs> that, that's why the movie was not the bell witch uh because we didn't want any confusion well yeah i can see that i definitely can see that because i every time i go to say it i say the blair witch so mm -hmm. i try to yeah. There's a lot of interesting stories about about the making of this movie. And, Tell us. Uh, first, of all, <laughs> first of all, they decided, you know, there's been about five movies that, that were were made or sort of made, but they were made on on uh, the budget of uh, maybe our collective grocery bill this week. Oh, and so they didn't look too good. Uh, this one was budgeted at $13 million and was going to be filmed right on location. Mm -hmm. I did interview the owner of the property at the time and looked all around. Uh, but then, then the producer found out that Romania had just begun its, its uh, uh, productions for films um, at, and was in its infancy and they could save three million dollars. So here's an. It, it, it's like, Mer Mer Do you remember Merrill Lynch's "Bullish on America"? That ad. It was filmed in Spain. It really got them in big trouble. Well, this is an American haunting filmed in Romania. Are you kidding me? <laughs> really? That no. is crazy. Oh, wow. So Whoa. here's the irony. <clears throat> it was begun in mid September. I was invited over. It was very nice. Got my own limousine and driver and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but since this was in its infancy and these people, the Romanians had been under the communists. And one of their favorite sayings is, uh, our agreement is you pretend to pay us. We pretend to work. They didn't know how to work hard. They took all kinds of breaks. So it took an extra three weeks to make this film. And it ended up costing thirteen million dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, wow. and it ran ran till Christmas Eve. So uh, then Sissy Spacek and Donald Sutherland and everything, they had to run back home for a little holiday and make other pictures. Then, hmm. Any other any any other hauntings after that? Hauntings. <laughs> like what, the house, the, the house. Now, is it was it, is it still around or not? Oh, no, no. There's, there are foundations. You can see a well. You can go into the cave if they let you in. The cave. Yeah, is what's that about? The, the cave. Yeah, the ghost adventures were in there. Yeah, yeah. We, were there we were there three times and it was closed. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it <laughs> was struck out. That's right. And you can't get very deep in there. And beside, if you remember, there's a river right next to it, right? Yeah, the Red River. Yeah. Right. And so that rises and floods the caves. So a lot of times ah. they can't use the bell. And the bell witch caves are just sort of a, a little side thing. Uh, regarding well, I don't the, know about that. I don't know about that. Of all the caves, okay? Now, I was watching some YouTube videos. Um, there it was like a descendant of John Bell. Um, he's mm -hmm. like a ghost hunter. And uh, he went in with a couple guys, man, and, and he was freaked out. Other uh, K2s or REM pods were going on. And I do believe um, that the, that Kate Bell or whoever she is, the witch, yeah. used to live back in that cave. Mm -hmm. And um, and there's a lot of paranormal activity down there. And um, so 
I think the cave is really, really important in the whole situation. I also believe what Jason was saying on top late earlier in the show about the Native Americans. Is there an Indian burial ground there? There was, a, there was a small or slight mound. Yeah, it don't matter. It, it don't well, matter if it was a small a small we mound. We're with loggerheads with this because uh, I watch. I inadvertently tune into these uh, paranormal hunters, and uh, all I end up saying is, "What was that?" <laughs> Oh, do you feel this cool my, spot? I mean, nothing not has been happening. <laughs> they look for any scintilla of supernatural history and go there and make a big deal of it, and it's for mm. money. Yeah. Uh, it's hmm. money, 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 money. Money talks. Well, we do it for free. I hate that. <laughs> I yeah, know. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I we, wish we could. I wouldn't do it. Yeah, but we still, get, we still get a lot of uh, good... Good stuff on evidence, our, evidence yeah. yeah. <laughs> or el else you wouldn't be doing it. But you right. know, it, it, this story is compelling because uh, I've only had um, one book series, uh, which is called the Jekyll Island Club series. And this book stay in publication for more than 10 years. This one's been in publication now for what? Uh, let's see when, it, I don't even remember when it was first published, let's see. 2002? Two, that's what I thought, 2002. So we're going, we're going into our 19th year, and I like every six months getting those royalty checks. There you go. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you something? How did they find out about your book? Did someone, someone you know, pitch it to them? Oh, you mean the uh, film producers? Yes. He walked by a bookshop, and it was in the bookshop window. Are you kidding me? Wow, mm. that's awesome. Now, yeah, that, hey, that was lucky yeah. because, unfortunately, and I, I guess I shouldn't say the name of my agents in New York, <clears throat> they never had me as what they call front list. And uh, also, they never thought horror was, was anything that they should be pitching out in Hollywood. And I only found this out when they fired a guy who was constantly in my camp who uh, on the day he left decided to call me up and tell me what they had not done. Oh. Yeah. Oh, really? I what don't consider you? it a horror movie, though. No, it isn't. It's more, it's, it's a, Scary. Supernatural, a supernatural thriller, I think. You know, yeah. that's what I write. I don't, I don't pretend to write horror. Um, my other big success was the Book of Common Dread. And... Um, Blood of the Covenant, which was a sequel, that also Michael Schnessel, that came from the uh, head writer of One Life to Live. We were leaving a theater production and we got in an argument about vampires. And he said, there's no possibility anybody can go any farther with a vampire. <clears throat> I took mm. up the challenge. Mm, I don't know. Mm. You look right, look think, at the success that True Blood on HBO was. Absolutely. I, you know. Yeah. Uh, What's your uh, opinion on the... Uh, mm -hmm part where William Porter tried to burn the uh, bell witch mm. and didn't succeed because it got increasingly heavy and then took off out of the house. Like what's your thoughts on that part? Whisper down the lane, add some stuff. <laughs> really? Everybody, everybody's got a little, you know, a little bit to add. Oh a little, yeah. A little sprinkle here, a little sprinkle there. Yeah. Uh, how cars. much did they change it from your novel? Uh, they said the the way that the uh, producer got the novel was to say, I'm not changing a thing. <laughs> and then Sissy Spacek and Donald Sutherland got their hands on it. And and uh, he also got fearful uh, and tried to make some, put a lot of exorcist in it, which was really yeah. stupid. You know? Drag it, uh, lifting her off the, the ground. Nobody said she was lifted off the ground. So, I mean, he went for a little more spectacle. He had always wanted to turn a carriage in a, in a carriage chase upside down, and he got to do it. Had nothing to do with taking Betsy away from the property to see if the witch would not follow her, but they put her in an old Romanian carriage and, 
boy, I tell you that that scene does do well because it flipped the 360 degrees, if you remember. Chased by hey, Russell. I got a question for Russie. What? So, uh, you were down there three times. You know, yeah. did you like feel any energies or like anything supernatural while you were there? You know, being a fellow ghost hunter. No, um, do we just seen the uh, clothes do not enter. And I called the woman. I called the woman and she said, uh, we will be opening in a month. If you want to give me your name, you come on back and you can do an investigation. So as well, anybody we know where we're going next on. year. That was in we was in New Orleans in the R V for Mardi Gras. Mm. And she said it was off season. So hey, road trip. Yes, sir. We're That's going. Good. Oh, I got her number. <laughs> good good it's crazy it was interesting uh, uh it because it was in romania and there were only that so few people speaking english that uh, i got pretty friendly with sissy spacek and donald sutherland oh. I, I don't bother people you know famous people uh but when they come up to you constantly you say hey you know they want to talk so that was kind of uh, kind of interesting. The first thing Sissy Spacek said to me was, thank you so much for writing a book that makes me money. <laughs> and the second thing she says, speaking about money, can you lend me $110? My daughter's with me and she forgot her graphing calculator. Are you kidding me? I thought that was hysterical. So I lent her the money and then she paid me back. Amen. <laughs> there you go. Madison, They're normal. Her daughter, Madison. <laughs> That's amazing. So tell us some more ghost stories. Oh, ghost stories. Uh, Who are you going to call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I'm, uh, the Pol Poltergeist ghost stories are kind of ones that make my eyes water. But I, the still, don't think I, I still don't think that there is a separate ghost in at least 90% of the situations, you know, there is more in heaven and hell than are dreamt of in our, you know, our uh, thoughts, Horatio, as Shakespeare said, but, but, uh, that's so you're weird. talking about, uh, sorry to interrupt, but you're talking about poltergeist. Um, I actually had firsthand experience with one of those in the house that I live in after moving in about 10 years ago. Uh, Sean and Russ can attest to all everything that happened. This thing was literally tearing the house apart when we weren't here. I've caught voices on EVPs. Like we thought, you know, that we were getting robbed or something, but nobody took nothing. Stuff was thrown across rooms, broken, you know, everything's documented and, you know, have evidence of all of it. And, uh, you know, it, it was nasty. It was something that, yeah. that that's what got me into the paranormal, you know, in the beginning after I had Sean, you know, his PPS come out. You know, take care of this thing, but uh, yeah, I'm what, not. It's, I'm it's not real. willing. I'm not willing to dismiss all this stuff. You know what happens though? You get uh, people who uh, capitalize on it, like the Amityville Horror. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And, yeah. You know, and, and yeah. that destroys and that destroys anything else because everybody's then so skeptical. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now yeah. the other thing that made the hair stand up on the back of my neck when I read it many, many, many years ago, was The Exorcist, because uh, then, I, yeah. then I did some research, and damn, I mean, here's a person in restraints um, who supposedly possessed, and her, uh, I, don't, I don't remember if it was a woman or a, a man or a boy or a girl, but it said, help me. It was a young boy. Help me, it said in the skin and raised welts. Yes. Holy mackerel. Those exorcisms are really scary. I, I, I follow a um, YouTube video and they talk, there's a priest um, that talks about all how the Catholic Church have, you know, gone to exorcisms. And some of those stories are so horrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that they're scared. There's so many of them too. It's just not one. And it seems like there's more and more each day. It's not something that went away. I mean, I don't know why they don't talk about them more. There's so many good stories that people could be writing. <laughs> Horror stories. Those ones are scary. Oh. As, I, as I understand it, the Catholic Church 
resists as much as possible participating yeah. in this because they don't want to have a, a like a circus atmosphere generated around the church. See, but I, th- they well, will, I think it's... they will send priests every once in a while. See, I think well, it's I more haven't. of like a uh, underground kind of thing right now because I yeah. just found out recently that a relative of mine knows personally a uh, exorcist, a priest who's an exorcist who's ordained through the Vatican, but it's extremely yeah. low key because of like what yeah. you said, you know, yeah. become a circus. But I feel like it is really still going on. We just don't hear about it because it's so underground. You know, yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff yeah. in the church that we don't hear. A friend, about. A friend of <laughs> mine <laughs> did get a friend of mine did get an, an exorcist into our house. This was a while back. There was no priest, like like uh, Jason said. He he was ordained by the Vatican in order to come in. He was a lay person. He was nor you know a regular person. Was no priest, but from what I understand, is that the priest and the Catholic, Catholic priest don't go out and do this anymore. Um, it's there's special like priests us. that do that. So, Not your everyday priest does that. They're they're specially trained to do those exorcisms. Mm-hmm. Uh, New Orleans is near and dear to my heart for one particular story. It was on a Sunday late afternoon. I got a call from out of nowhere. And a gentleman said, I'm calling you from New Orleans. And uh, I won't tell you what my name is because I'm a close friend of Anne Rice. And I don't want to be disinvited from her parties. But (laughs) uh, your vampire makes her vampires look like, well, it began with an S and ended with a T, but had like nine syllables. So. Oh, whoa, man. Ah, wow. That was an interesting. So what are your vampires like? (laughs) Uh, I want to suck your blood. The mine is, is um, a group of 18. There's never more. There's six. Six um, Caucasians, six Asians, uh, six of African descent. So that makes six, six, six. Mm, That's really neat. They serve the devil because in the book of Jude in the New Testament, the devil has been cast down to hell and cannot appear on earth and uses substitute minions. And these are former, and they still are human beings, they just have um, prolonged life. They trade with the devil pow- uh, monthly powder supplies by doing the devil's bidding. And they do need to mix this with human blood. And so we have one uh, in my story, we have one uh, assigned to destroy the last copy of an ancient book that tells all about this. And it's in the Princeton University rare manuscripts room my wife worked at princeton university and that library is something to behold five stories um and the rare manuscripts section is like fort knox to get into he's got to figure out how to to uh, uh convince two people with keys to to this vampire to get in there and destroy the manuscript it did. This book did extremely well, especially in uh, the British Isles. Wow. What's the, the title on that one? That's not the Dr. Jekyll, is it? No, that's the Book of Common Dread and its sequel, Blood of the Covenant. And this is a, a vampire who is planning. He is using a little bit of his powder and getting research scientists to try to figure out what it is so he can get free of the devil. And so it's a race against time. It sounds like a series on uh, Netflix. I wish. I wish. Mm. That's right. Mm. Can I start having to pitch that? <laughs> <laughs> I need, I need uh, to uh, get to the right people. Every once in a while. Stage the Blum, 32. The Blumhouse people and, and, and a couple of other places say, let us see this and let us see that. I, I, um, I, wrote what I think is a plausible um, solution to the death of Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, so they were fascinated by that, but I don't know. 
if the alienist makes it, this one's, I think, as good as the alienist. Yeah, that just means, trying to get it to the right people. That's it. You got to, and money talks, as you said, money talks. Jen. Yes, it does. They money run the world. Money. The bankers. You know, yeah, I know how financed? tough it is. You know who financed this movie? Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, an American Haunting? Uh, the big, um, what would you call it, owner of the casinos in Hong Kong. Come on. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's where okay. the money came. Did it play in uh, China? Oh, <laughs> probably it did. All, all I know is if, if you're writing a book and you sell it, just don't plan on getting anything more than what you get up front. If they give you a percentage and so forth, it never makes, I it know. Never makes a profit. I got my, my series options, and I, I'm not getting very much. But mm -hmm. We'll see if they ever go through with the movie. Who knows? It's supposed to be a series on Netflix, so I don't know. Yeah, don't, oh. don't you just kind of shake your head when you see the stuff that's out there and say, wow. <laughs> I could write better than that. <laughs> that stuff right. is so awful. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but, but I'll tell you the secret. Look at the producer, look at the director, and look at the writer, and often they're the same person. They just have access to money. Yeah. That one person. All that so. takes is the one person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. So you got the um, Bell Witch, and the caves aren't really real. You don't think that's is there's is there anything else that's like supernatural that you would you know think about writing a book on that you've heard about or visited yeah, you know I, I look every once in a while i haven't gotten truly excited about anything and i sold my the entire collection of michael's um to oh what's his name he's a, a, a big fiction writer a ghost road blues and uh out in out in los angeles so i don't I used to read through and say, yeah, let's find a story that I could retell. Nothing has excited me as much as this, uh, as this thing that happened in Tennessee. I mean, uh, why did he die? I think the mother figured it out and poisoned him. Do you think that she knew that he was fooling around with it, her daughter? I think it, she finally came to the realization. They sort of soft peddled that in the movie, too. But, so what uh, would have been the black liquid that was in the bottle? Yes. Anybody know what That's that was? Right. And and you know, there's plenty of there's plenty of berries that'll kill you. Oh yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. so that, that's and, berries, and unfortunately, berries, all kinds of berries. unfortunately, that stupid young man threw it in the fire, so it couldn't be analyzed. So mm -hmm. uh, but they were like, could they have analyzed it back then? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was like the 1800s. I don't think. Yeah, I don't really think so. No. More difficult. Well, I'm wondering <laughs> if they still have the Bell Witch Festival and put the play on. Oh, Can't I'm they sure they do. Them. Yes, they do. Russie, you were shaking over there. You all right? <laughs> you all right, buddy? You all right, no, Russie? Fine as frogs hair. <laughs> 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 but they do have that. Um, that uh, Andrew Jackson said his wagon wheels locked up and he said he would rather fight the British army than go back to the bell um, property. That's pretty yeah, intense. That's oh, yeah, it right. is. <laughs> is there anything going on now with the, uh, the bell property, Russell? Not that I know of. I know if you go way out in the woods, you can find his uh, John Bell's grave. They said it's uh just by itself in the middle of a grove of trees. I, I seen on YouTube, a guy went out, was looking for it. He found it. They do have a cemetery with a sort of obelisk on there that yeah. commemorates it, but that's not where he's buried. I understand. <laughs> he's buried out in a grove of trees somewhere. <laughs> it shows it on Google maps. If you put John Bell's grave, it'll oh, wow. go yep. in the middle of a field. Well, the oh. daughter, I think subconsciously got back at him pretty well. She literally haunted him to death. Yeah. You know, with, with this creature. <laughs> wow. 
Sean, you have anything to say about this? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I don't. <coughs> Hold on. Okay. What about at the end when a lot of people would hear someone singing with a beautiful voice in mm -hmm. church? Okay. And that beautiful voice wasn't there. I mean, I, I find this very interesting, um, this whole story. And, you know, you might have a little snippets here, snippets here, snippets here. But in my heart, I believe that the Native Americans down there, they messed with that uh, Indian burial ground and all hell broke loose. And that's why I'm looking at it. That's how I feel. You know, can the word Kentucky, what that means? No. The bloody ground, because it's it was the roughly the border between two major Indian nations, and that's where they would rub up against each other, and uh, uh, wholesale slaughter went on. Mm -hmm. So right around that area. Right. Was there any so, talk of any kind of massacre around Bell's house? I don't know. I couldn't find anything. Native Americans mm -hmm. used to slaughter each other. A lot. Back That's right. Before, back before the Europeans even come over. And That's they, right. A lot of more cannibals, too, that they don't publish that kind of stuff. Even with lacrosse, I understand the way they played it, it was deadly. Yeah. It was an excuse. Everything so, was so intense way back in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Then they um, went up with the really bloodthirsty Europeans. They thought they were bloodthirsty. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of you, mystery to the Hudson to? Bay, too. I don't know if you heard. There's a lot of ghost stories about the Hudson Bay right. area. All, all up the Hudson River, right. A lot of ghost stories, absolutely. What and, the... of course, that's, that's where we get uh, uh, Rip Van Winkle. And, I didn't uh, know that. And, uh, know that. We get, and we get uh, the Sleepy Hollow story. You know, th that, that was, was interesting a movie. That I was interesting. It. So with mm -hmm. the stories of the uh, bell witch, like showing up as weird animals before yeah. the hauntings, yeah. uh, is there, right. do you think there's any truth to that? Like it would show up as like a, like a dog's body with like a rabbit's head. Oh, is it like crazy. the wolf in the movie? Yeah. You know, like it, it would just show up as something just totally out of the ordinary. And then, you know, right before the haunting started, do you think there's any truth to that? I think what happens in these things is the polder, the, the haunting begins and then everybody looks back and remembers and says, Oh, must've been connected to that. That was a, you know, an, an omen or a premonition or, and how about the little, the little girl in the green outfit hanging from the tree? Yeah. The what about that? Who knows? Who knows? But they did put her in the story and they also, there was a cave on this. I think it was a prince's property for many years years before in Romania and there was a small cave. So they, they threw that, 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 that had nothing to do with the story. That was just for them. <laughs> I just can't believe they, they filmed it in Romania. It's so cool. <laughs> right. And uh, let me tell all of you and your listeners that if you go to Romania and you want to give your leading ladies flowers, do not buy a dozen of them for them. Well, why? Because it costs we like a little, We stopped at a roadside stand. The, my limousine driver gets out, and I said, I'd like to get them each a dozen red roses. Well, the discussion went on and got super heated and everything. Uh, and he came back, and, and he had the flowers. And he said, well, the problem was that in our country, you only have a dozen flowers at funerals. That's oh, wow. an unlucky number. Oh, oh my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, oh, wow. it's, Should have been a baker's you, dozen. You got to know yeah. the, the difference in, in other countries, right? Their traditions and so forth. You can, you can get in big trouble. Uh, uh, here's another story that's kind of interesting. Those nasty wolves uh, that they had, they were the tamest things. They, they really had to just drag meat in, down the, the road to get them to, to chase. And because they were the wrong color, they were constantly spraying them with black hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that's black roses. What you, black roses? Have you seen black roses? 
Well, they must be sprayed, aren't they? I don't or know. Blown. I think they can actually grow them. They're so expensive. Well, I know that Jackson and Perkins, which when I was young was the big company for hybrid tea roses, mm -hmm. uh, was offering, oh, let's say in 1960, something like $100,000 if someone would breed uh, a, a black rose so that they could sell it. But I don't, I don't know. I think they've gotten to very dark violets, but they haven't gotten to pure black. And hybrid teas are almost disappeared. I don't know what happened with them. Boy, are we going far afield on this. Well, <laughs> you never know. But I do like the stories about the vampires. I think we need a new vampire movie. Well, right oh, one, Jenny. What? Write one, write one, Jenny. Oh, I'm so busy. I you have to pitch my stuff right this here. week. Huh? You got a fleet of actors right here. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Sean already looks like he's dead, so. I'll be John. Yeah. Are we talking about the Adams family? <laughs> oh, man. Sean of the Dead? What? Excuse Is he me? Sean of the Dead? There you go. Sean of the Dead. That was Sean of the Dead. Dead. Of the dead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm cool. You're cool. You're cool. I mean, no, I'd probably be the vampire that, you know, did something wrong and they pulled my fangs out because I have no teeth. You'd be the vampire <laughs> that's sleeping all the time. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. I'd mean, have Rust, Rust the Impaler. Mm -hmm. No, I had, reinvent the vamp I had to reinvent the vampire because I said, really, think about it. You want to live forever, but most of the time you're in a coffin and when you're out, you're either trying to get suck fluids out of somebody or stick <laughs> fluids into somebody. Uh, it's not exactly the best, the best existence, you know? So I made something entirely, entirely different and more human than m monster, but both. And so I, I manipulated my plot so that the, the reader first hated him, then liked him, then hated him, then loved him. And then rooted for him and rooted against him. Kind of like watching wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. Get yeah, him on the boat and call him a vampire pirate. Wait a minute. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a difference. Wrestling is real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, what are you telling me? There's is there somebody in the on the um, comments that said something? Yeah, if you click over to comments, uh, yeah. a guy named Guy Ricketts. He says, uh, I think this program is awesome to have and be part of. Thank you guys for doing a show like this. It teaches a little bit of stuff and it's very interesting knowledge. Well, that's this. good. How, Thank you. Asked how long we've been doing the show for. Thanks, Guy. How long have we Thank been you, doing the show? We've been doing it'll be a year in on June 4th. June, yes, my June birthday. 4th. Oh, I didn't know it was your birthday. Sorry to yes. hear that. Well, I got to <laughs> I'm having a lot more fun than some of the interviews I've done. <laughs> One woman, we were we were on a, a a a tour around the country for a book, and this woman wasn't prepared, and she gets on and she says, "So, uh, what's this book like?" I said, "It's like 300 pages." <laughs> that's a uh, that was so a, insulting. She didn't. She well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna get the one about the vampires because I, I have a thing for vampires. I've always, I've, I watched uh, Dark Shadows when I was, I think, three years old. My Two mother minutes. said that she called WTAE in Pittsburgh and told them to take it off. I'd watch it in front of the. I was nine, was it three years old, at nine o'clock in the morning. I would sit there with my eyes glued to it, but then I would have nightmares every night. So yeah. she called the station. Why do you have that on? Dark shadows at nine o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I love vampires. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's almost the witching hour in college. Yep, we got about a minute left, Jay. Okay, about a minute left. Well, well, thank you so much, Brett, for being on the show. Um, yeah, where can someone you. find your your material and your website? Uh, yeah, my website is www. Brent Monahan, B R E N T M O N A H A N dot com. Uh, and um, people can write to me out of that directly, and they can order books directly. They can get autographed books. So, 
so Sounds they can great. learn a lot more about me. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It was a pleasure. Thank you, and Russell. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for Russell. joining us, Russell. And guys, no do you have anything planned this week? Uh, not really. Yeah, just kind of low key the next couple of weeks, just, you know, taking yeah. a little bit because, you know, you don't want to get burned out. You know, Definitely. No, but I tell you what, speaking of extras, real quick before we sign off, I decided to take a ride out to that yellow dog, you know, that little community out there, <laughs> Pasca Tanning. And believe it or not, speaking of Exorcist, as I went into that sit in that little town, the Exorcist theme song was playing on the radio. It was <laughs> wild, man. It was crazy, man. That's uh, a creepy place. The little things. Yeah, that's, that sounds exciting. But I want to tell you about next week. We have Stan Gordon back on the show. Um, the Kecksburg cool. Festival was canceled again because of COVID, but yeah. we're not going to let it stop. We're going to have Stan on the show, and he's going to talk about some unusual things that are going around in the Chestnut cool. Ridge in the Westmoreland County, Greensburg area, and the Pittsburgh area. So that should be in Pennsylvania. So that should be really interesting, guys. But thank you so much yeah. for joining us tonight. Thanks again for tuning thank in you. to Chasing Prophecy. Thank guys, you, everybody. everyone, have a great night. See you next week. See you next week.